Let's get right to it today. Indy 500 preview. Some things to watch for as you watch the 500. And as a racing fan, you know you must. Indy's still a U.S. and global iconic event. Plus, this year's new cars, like them or not, give you many reasons to watch, good and bad. Monaco F1, another most iconic race. Not real F1, this track perverts the capabilities of F1 tech. But like last year, it sets up for great strategy and great driving. Guys like Alonso, Button, Hamilton, Vettel, Raikkonen, and who knows, will put on a real wheel show. And finally, Isle of Man TT, bikes and sidecars on the streets of the mountains and towns of the Isle of Man. Off the shores of Great Britain and Ireland for those of you who cut geography class for a smoke behind the school gym. It's one thing to circle the brickyard or carve the Monaco streets in your carbon tub safety cell race car. Isle of Man racers on 200 mile an hour bikes take the racing thing to a whole other level. You know, I would have said they had big balls, but last time Mike Spinelli mentioned Isle of Man on his Drive Central show, you guys spit out a spate of he loves man gay jokes. So during the shakedown intro that's about to play, Get it all out of your system so when we get back, we can go back to work after the break. The Indy 500. For the casual fan, know this. This year, Indy has new cars designed to be safer, but controversial, not just for their looks, but for not fully polished handling and slower speed versus the old car they replaced and three engine manufacturers versus being all Honda for the last many years. Chevy and Lotus join Honda. But Indy 2012 has been an all Chevy show so far. The winner usually comes from the front of the 33 car field. In 1987, however, Alonso won his fourth Indy starting 20th. Since then, the average starting spot for the winner has been 5.6. So think the first two rows. That doesn't mean there aren't dramatic runs from the back to try and steal a win. Tony Kanaan in 2010, and Scott Goodyear in 1992. Tony starts P8 and is due for an Indy win. All the major players of Indy are ready to go. Penske, who brought Chevy back to Indy, is on pole, plus P4 and 5. Andretti Autosport, also Chevy, fills out the rest of the front two rows. And Ganassi, with Dario Franchitti, Scott Dixon, Charlie Kimball, and Graham Rahal, lead the Honda charge, but they start P16, 15, 14 and 12 respectively. Lotus, for your information, is in the last two last row spots. So far off the pace, <laughs> I get to do this joke. The TV broadcast will once again feature Bat Cam, a camera on a cable running alongside the made straight, capable of 80 mile an hour speeds. Hey, that's faster than John Alacy's Lotus. Okay, not much of a joke. The race favorites, Will Power and Elio Castro Neves from Penske. Marco Andretti from Dad's team, and his teammate Ryan Hunter Ray. The series ABC TV marketing media favorites? Well, let's start with Ryan Briscoe and his IZOD sponsored Penske on pole. IZOD is the IndyCar series sponsor, and word is IZOD is not happy with the series. So, pole and a win would be a nice sponsor saving result. Next, James Hinchcliffe is the 2012 media darling with his hipster internet video comedy act. He drives the GoDaddy car that Danica Patrick used to wheel. You'll see one of his snarky videos on the race broadcast, so you decide if he's cool or not. A GoDaddy win would be good for IndyCar to keep a brand who spent a ton of money happy, to exercise Danica from Indy once and for all, and to reward all the Danica haters with the opportunity to say, see? J.R. Hildebrand, the other media story the Indy media beats like a baby seal on a Sarah Palin family outing. JR lost the 2011 500 on the last turn. And that allows the media to torture him with actual questions like, JR, are you ready to win now? Yeah, no way. Look at the publicity I got for crashing. I'm more confident in the Greek economy than my driving. So lap one, turn one, I'm just going to auger the damn thing into the safer barrio and let you focus on the real racers, you dick. No? Okay. The emotional picks for a win? How about Rubens Barrichello starting P10? How about his teammate, Kanan, as I mentioned earlier? And Sebastian Bourdais, free from the no horsepower Lotus, now in a Chevy, because he's fast, fearless, and needs to remind all that he's still a great racer. He won four consecutive champ car championships. He's starting 25th, so he'll be the guy to watch making the run from the back. And a prayer for Dan Weldon, and hopes that Indy and the TV show do not overplay his passing. And now some Indy 500 details for the techno geeks in the audience. Indy's success is a function of low drag, 
handling, horsepower, and balancing setup against the many variables of track condition, weather, temperature, air density, wind, etc., etc. The race will be exciting because the teams and racers are dealing with so many new things and have no experience on how to make the new cars and engines work best or eke out the versus others advantage. Plus, the 2012 rules are trying to limit the adjustability of the cars and the tweaks the teams can do to make the cars special. But the key is to cut drag and make a slippery race car. Listen a bit to Dario Franchitti as he discusses a bit of that about his Ganassi Dallara Honda. Thanks to our sponsor, Sim Raceway, for sharing the video. No matter what we tried, that was the speed we had in the, in the car. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not good enough, quite honestly. It's uh, everybody in this team works so hard and we just, uh, you know, both in, in the car, the engine side of things, I think we got left behind a little bit and uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, there's really not much else to say on it. You know, there's these cars right now, there's only so much you can take off drag wise. Um, it's an unfortunate part. If we had another couple hundred horsepower, we wouldn't have that issue, but there's only so much we can take off and so we uh, uh, we took off all the efficient things with the lift over drag numbers, or downforce over drag numbers is supposed to be. And then we got really creative. Um, we maxed the rear wing out to minus 10, which in, in my book is uh, becomes an airplane wing at that point because it's actually working the, the opposite. But uh, then the, the, the underfloor, there's the sides, the underfloor that we're allowed to take off. And you're pretty much dropping 250 pounds of downforce aside for, uh, I don't know, five pounds of drag benefit or something ridiculous. And Dixie and I qualified with one of those off each. Uh, Dixon actually tried to practice with two off and that didn't work so well. Uh, but uh, nobody ever said we were smart, but we, we, gave it, we really gave it our all. And uh, yeah, we will hopefully the, the engine that, that Honda bring for the, the race is gonna be better. And uh, we've all done a, a better job with setting the car up for the race and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Indy the series is trying to limit car adjustability. But with new tech and new rules comes officiating challenges for compliance. After poll day, 13 teams were handed $275,000 in cash penalties for trying things but voiding the rules. Various infractions, most of it positioned as using the wrong parts or not following procedures. All the cars in the first three rows, save for the Joseph Newgarten Sarah Fisher Hartman entry, all the Penske and Dreddy KV Racing entries got wallet nicks. In there, there was something about violating the spec prohibiting the use of computer logic to control any function of the braking system. Was there a bit of stability control being tried? Remember McLaren F1 and their brake control to manage handling? Watch the race become a drafting party. Qualifying may not matter this year. Using the draft to jump to the front and or riding the draft to save fuel may make 2012 more than any other year a race to just get yourself in position for the last 50 miles, 25 laps and for Ganassi Hondas to draft with a faster Chevy to save fuel and maybe a pit stop. But getting to a Chevy and passing are two different issues. And everything new may mean inexperience for all, but the teams with the most experience still carry an advantage. So Penske versus Ganassi versus Andretti for the win will only not happen if we have crashes, if they make mistakes, or the new engines fail the first 500 mile live fire test. Let's all watch. So there's middle America glamour at the Indy 500. Corn dogs with great poupon, anyone? But for global glamour, there's the Monaco F1. Thursday practice gave us Button at the front with Lotus and Ferrari next. But with rain, and it is practice, so really did we learn anything? The chatter is setting Lotus up for the win, or the fall if they fail. Kimi and Roman will be tough. Monaco is not tough on engines, only 43% full throttle, and not a horsepower track. It's also not tough on brakes either. It's medium stress versus other tracks. High downforce and a lot of mechanical grip, which gets us to tires. Pirelli is introducing their P0 Red Super Softs to complement their yellow soft tires. So, and I do not know the right strategy. Do you use Reds to qualify and get track position? Or save Red sets for the race and lower lap times as the race burns on? Or is there a one-stop strategy lurking to steal the race? Now, Kimmy said he wants to go rallying again. <laughs> the team said no. They said Robert Kubica. Monaco is the perfect car control venue to get the sideways Scandi flick sh out of his system. I say Kimmy versus Alonso, Lewis, and Nico will be awesome. But what do you think? Comments, please. 
And after the race, let's see who gets it right. What else do I think? I get to tease you with the news I got today that may have Shakedown going to an F1 race and not Montreal or Austin. But look at the Austin pavement is going down already. So stay freaking tuned for our F1 Shakedown travel show plans. Anthony Bourdain, I'm coming for you. Now as cool as Indy in Monaco may be, the legend and myth of the Isle of Man TT tourist trophy bike races transcends all including my ignorance of the events and our ability to show you awesome video of bikes banging through the 37 mile 60.7 kilometer circuit. So I've loaded you up with links to the TT in our description to set you on your way like a rider leaving the starting line heading toward Bray Hill. May 26th through June 8th, practice and racing, super bikes, super stocks, the sidecars, which everyone loves, the TTX GP green bikes, historics, Enjoy the links, give me your thoughts and your smarts about the TT to fill in the things I don't know. And somewhere in all this, I'll try to Skype call one of the TT stars to get some real insights. And give me some names on that too. So to end, let me reflect back on last Monday's show. Thank you for all the great ugly race car suggestions. You guys know ugly. I was going to make a montage, but you gave me so many. And for the record, no, I don't think Tajima's Pikes Peak EV is ugly. And yes, I agree with commenter, what do you say, one, I am ugly. But I've been with girls. What have you got? Some Purell in your imagination? Bang. Also, a programming reminder. This week, Shakedown will be on Tuesday, May 29th. That way, I can enjoy the holiday a bit, but get ready to report back to you on all the weekend's racing results. Well, all of it except the NASCAR race. We'll leave that to speed.com to tell you how Billy Bob Dick Slapper won the Cracker Barrel Cheese Stores and gas pump-a-thon 600 from some track in armpit North Carolina. Have a great weekend and in the U.S. a Memorial Day. See you on Tuesday.